You've already looked at equivalent fractions. We're just going to have another quick look at them. Um, and here are the two things we want to first to get right. First, we want to make sure we know what equivalent fractions mean. So when we say a half and two quarters or two fourths are equivalent fractions, what do we mean? We mean even though this and this look different, they appear different, they're actually representing exactly the same number. So one half, two fourths, that's exactly the same number. And that's what we mean by equivalent fractions. Now, how do we get equivalent fractions? Well, you've already been doing a whole lot of this. If you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, you'll get an equivalent fraction. So like here, multiply the numerator by 2, multiply the denominator by 2, you get 2 fourths, which is a equivalent, an equivalent fraction. So as long as you multiply, and actually you can do divide as well, multiply or divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing, you will get an equivalent fraction. What we're going to see later in this video is that this doesn't work with addition and subtraction. So if you add the same thing to the numerator and the denominator, you actually don't end up with an equivalent fraction. But let's first focus on what does work, multiplying and dividing. And let's just see why. Well, let's first concentrate on a half. Well, what does a half mean? It means we cut up this is the whole. We cut it up into two pieces, and then we just take one of those pieces, right? So that's what a half looks like. Why is, what is and why is two-fourths equivalent? Well, let's focus on that two-fourths. What does it mean? Well, we are going to cut up into four pieces now. So we've doubled the number of pieces we cut up into. But we also double the number of pieces that we take. So now we take two pieces, not just one piece. So even though we double the number of pieces we cut up into, we also double the number of pieces that we take, which is why we end up with the same amount of chocolate or whatever we think of this whole as. And so similarly, for example, if we had a look at uh, why is this and this equivalent, right? Well, it's because we've multiplied the numerator and denominator both by 3. So what have we done? Instead of just having two pieces, what we've said is we want three times as many pieces that we cut the chocolate bar up into. So we've cut the bar up into three times as many pieces. But we also are going to take three times as many pieces. And so we end up with exactly the same amount of chocolate as we would have if we took a half. So each time what we're doing is, yes, we cut the chocolate bar up into double the number of pieces or three times the number of pieces or six times the number of pieces. But then we also take three times or six times or eight times or whatever it is, the number of pieces. So we keep the actual amount of chocolate we are taking each time the same. And that's why it works. Multiplying or dividing numerator and denominator by the same thing gives us an equivalent fraction. It gives us the same number, the same amount. So let's look at the idea of what might happen if you add the same amount to the top and the bottom. Do you end up with an equivalent fraction then? Well, let's have a look. A half, we know it's just the one piece out of the two, right? So there's your half. Now, what would happen if you added the same amount to the top and the bottom? So let's just do, let's add two to the top and add two to the bottom. You're going to end up with that amount. What will it look like as a picture? Well, you've turned the bottom into having four pieces, right? And then you want to take three of them. One, two, three of them. Can you see quite clearly that this thing here is definitely not the same amount as that over there? So adding the same to the top and the bottom does not give you an equivalent 
fraction. And this is a very important thing for us to note and to remember. That if we want an equivalent fraction, we must multiply or divide numerator and denominator by the same amount. If we add or subtract the same amount to the top and the bottom of a fraction, we don't end up with an equivalent fraction. All right, so say I'm asked to find a whole lot of fractions that are equivalent to three-fifths. Well, you know now, as long as you multiply or divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing, you will get an equivalent fraction. So if we multiply the top by two, and the bottom by 2, we get an equivalent fraction. And if we want to write that nicely, it's just 6 tenths. Uh, um, and so 6 tenths is equivalent to 3 fifths. If we multiply the top and the bottom by 10, let's say, as long as we do the same to top and the bottom, and we write that nicely as 30 over 50, 30 over 50 is exactly the same number. It is equivalent to 3 fifths. Or we could multiply the top and the bottom by 101, in which case we'd get 303 over 505, and that is going to be exactly equivalent, exactly the same number as 3 fifths. And if we multiply the top and the bottom by anything, x, we are going to have exactly the same number as 3 fifths. And if we write that nicely, just remembering how we write things nicely in algebra, that's just 3x over 5x. And that's equivalent to 3 fifths. Can you see here as well, if we started out with 30 over 50, that is 3 lots of 10 over 5 lots of 10. We can divide top and bottom by 10, because remember, equivalent fractions, if we divide the top and the bottom by the same thing, we get an equivalent fraction, and we just get 3 fifths. If we had 303 over 505, that's just 3 lots of 101 over 5 lots of 101. Divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by 101, you get the equivalent fraction, which is three-fifths. And so with 3x over 5x, we know that 3x just means 3 times x, and 5x just means 5 times x. We can divide top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing, and we'll get an equivalent fraction. Okay, here are a few I want you to try for yourself. See if you can fill in the missing pieces. Pause the video now, try it for yourself, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so hopefully this was nice and easy for you. Here, you saw that you multiplied the 6 by 2 to get 12, so you must do the same thing to the numerator, and you'll get 10 twelfths is equivalent to 5 sixths. Here, you multiplied the denominator by 10, so you must multiply the numerator by 10, so you'll get 50 over 60. And here, to get from 6 to 6x, you had to multiply 6 by x, so you must multiply the numerator by x, and so you'll get 5x over 6x is equivalent to 5 sixths. So just to end off, I'm going to do a quick recap. The story we've learned about here today is that if we multiply or divide the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same thing, we get equivalent fractions. So say, for example, we have 3 times 2 over 7 times 2, right? This is just going to be exactly the same as 3 sevenths. Because multiplying top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing gives you an equivalent fraction. So in fact, we can actually just cross out those 2s. And what we'll see when we get to algebra is this is exactly the same story. If we have 3x over 7x, right, we can just divide top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing, and we will get an equivalent fraction. So 3x over 7x is just equal to 3 over 7. This is not going to be the same if we've got additional subtraction. Additional subtraction are danger. They don't work nicely. So if you see here, if you've got 3 sevenths, right, 
Three sevenths is just a bit smaller than a half. What's three plus two? It's five. Seven plus two is nine. Can you see five ninths, three sevenths, those are not the same thing at all, right? You cannot just simply cross out this two and this two and imagine you've got the same thing, right? Three sevenths, five ninths are not the same thing. And we will see when we get to algebra that if you end up with 3 plus x and 7 plus x, you cannot just cancel those x's. The plus here makes it a problem. And you have to be very careful with what you do. You cannot just cancel when you have addition at the top and the bottom.